And so I'm going to get started by talking about Media Cloud Research a little bit, just giving you guys a high level overview of the tools, what they can do, and some of the types of projects that we've used for Media Cloud before. So Rahul, if you could click over to the next slide. Thanks. So Media Cloud is comprised of three tools. We have our Explorer tool, Topic Mapper, and Source Manager. Explorer is really great for getting a quick overview of how your topic of interest is covered by digital news media. It helps you explore the facets of media attention, language, and representation over time. Topic Mapper is much more of a deep dive. It helps you look very closely at media coverage of an issue by collecting more stories through a spidering process that we'll go into later. And in addition to the parameters that we look at in Explorer, such as attention, language, and entities, Topic Mapper actually also includes a really strong influence component that can help you understand how stories are being shared. And the last tool that we have is something called Source Manager, which helps you understand where our sources are coming from. We have really robust global geographic collections, so you can look at collections from one country or another. And you can also look at the time span in which sources have been in our system. So if you want to do research in 2015, it's a really great idea to check Source Manager to understand, okay, these sources started entering the system in 2014, we're good to go. Um, I'm seeing a question here. Were these tools developed in this order? Uh, Rahul, which tool did we start with? Good question. Um, uh, <laughs> that's about eight to 10 years ago. Uh, we started with a proto explorer just to let us see what was in there. But then actually because what we, we had a set of grants that were about creating uh, front end web based tools to support researchers that had less expertise in this domain in media analysis. And that was um, Gates and Robert O. Johnson Foundation funding. And that funded the development of Explorer and then Source Manager is mostly uh, has a large component of it that's built for ourselves to manage all of our media and collections and things like that. Um, so the short answer is we kind of wrote Explorer and Source Manager and then realized that Topic Mapper is the thing that we use for most of our research. But and no, no, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, go. So I was just going to say, I'll chime in off of that and I'll say that these tools work really well together in a way that you can start with one and move to another. So personally, when I'm working on projects, I often start with a combination of Explorer and Source Manager to really drill into what I'm looking for. And then I shift over to Topic Mapper to make a topic and get that more detailed analysis. And that process is something that we've sort of replicated in this tutorial. So we're going to start with Explorer and Source Manager and then move into Topic Mapper. And then we'll go into using the API for both of those. And I'm seeing another question, which sources are available from the platform? Yeah, so when we talk about the Source Manager component in more detail, I'll go into that. But please save that question because it's a really good one. Cool. Rob, can I chime you in with one? Yeah, yeah, can I chime in with one housekeeping um, note? Just so you all know, this session is being recorded because we want to post some of these tutorials certainly on our website as products. So if you're if you're not if you don't want, I, I think it just records the screen sharing and the speakers. Um, so I don't think it's getting your your videos. But if you want to be cautious, feel free to turn off your video. I personally like seeing your faces, but I did want to share that. And uh, we're going to try to do breakouts later, and those are not recorded. So you can share your video on there without be, uh, worrying about it. So I just want to share that housekeeping note so people are, know their expectations. Great. So the next thing that I wanted to drill into is the dimensions of analysis in Media Cloud. So there are four primary dimensions of analysis that you're able to use on Media Cloud, and those are attention, language and narratives, newsmakers or entities, and influence. The first three of these dimensions are dimensions that you get from Explorer and from Topic Mapper. The fourth dimension, influence, is only found in Topic Mapper, and I'll go into why in just a second. So attention is really looking at how much attention do various topics or events get, what events drive coverage. So for instance, if I went to Explorer and I ran a search on um, climate change, I would be really interested in knowing is there more attention on climate change when we had the climate strikes last year. 
Another thing that you can do, of course, is look at language and narratives. So this is really drilling into what narratives are present in coverage of a topic. So that can be things like comparing changes in word clouds over time. That can be something like looking at our really interesting word space models, which we'll get into later. And when we're thinking about newsmakers or entities, this is really looking at what people and organizations show up most prominently in news coverage of an issue. So if I'm looking at climate change again, then I would probably expect to see Greta Thunberg up there. I would probably expect to see environmental activist organizations up there. If some of those people are not what I expected, or if I see changes in newsmakers when I'm comparing time periods, that can also be a really interesting and productive finding. And finally, influence is really looking at what sources and stories are driving the news media ecosystem and which of those are driving social shares. So when we think about influence, we're assessing it on metrics such as how many Facebook shares is a certain source getting for my topic or how many media in links is a source getting for my topic? How many times are people linking to the New York Times versus the Washington Post versus a local news organization, depending on what you're searching for? What are the most popular stories, et cetera? And with that, I'll start going into some of the research that our media, te media cloud team has done. So Media Cloud is a joint project between the MIT Center for Civic Media and the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society. And um, our teammates over at Berkman are really, really driving a lot of the politics and elections coverage that we do or politics and elections research that we do. So in 2016, they conducted a study on how the US media ecosystem is talking about politics. And they found that there is asymmetrical polarization in our news media ecosystem. And they also identified certain pathways for propaganda to enter the mainstream media space. For this and for the French political news landscape, I'm including links to CJR pieces that talk about this cover this research in more detail, but that you can also follow to more long form pieces of research to get more information about that. The French political news landscape research was a joint project between us at the Center for Civic Media and Sciences Po and Institut Montaigne. And what we found is that in the French political media system, instead of seeing left to right media, we see media that's like anti and pro institutional. So the breakdown was different and that was really interesting to see. The work that we have in progress on this space right now is again from our teammates at Berkman where they are working really hard to study media coverage during our current election cycle in the US. Another topic of focus for our teams is health and health policy. So we've conducted projects on rural health where we're analyzing which issues are present or missing from rural news media. A project on paid family leave, looking at frames around this issue in US media vaccination, where for HPV work specifically, we were finding that mis and disinformation stories are among the top shared on social media. And we've also done a lot of research into public health and development news coverage in the Indian media ecosystem. Rahul, could you click over to the next slide? Oh, I did. Sorry. Hold on. I must have. There we go. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Thank you. And another bucket that we really look at is technology and social change. So two of our recent projects in this space have looked at digital privacy, where we found that there's a focus on Facebook at the exclusion of other intersectional issues, and that when talking about digital privacy, humanized voices are missing. We've also done a body of work into the future of work. So how prevalent is the narrative of robots are stealing our jobs? Are there narratives about automation leading to greater social and economic equity and who is purporting these various narratives who is sharing them who is talking about them so i'll jump back in here uh, again and just to talk some more about some of the work that we've done as you can probably guess a lot of our uh, funding has been from you know so pro-social nonprofits um, of uh, that work on these issues and also smaller groups either other academic institutions or uh, or community groups and nonprofits that work on things um, and then, of course, there's a whole bunch of, of work that other academics do and other researchers do. So some of the other issues we've talked about, or we've done investigation on, things like um, uh, bail and pretrial detention reform. So this focused actually on state level uh, coverage in the United States. 
um, we did a large project uh, on immigration and specifically focused on dehumanizing language. Um, and this one was a very exciting one for us to look at and connects to a lot of our work that's focusing now on hate speech online um, and extremism. Uh, we've also started with some partners philanthropy and the discussion of it in both the US and in India. As we talk about source manager in a little bit, you'll hear a little bit of how one of the key pieces that we've that has found a lot of value for partners and external users has been the fact that we have a lot of global coverage. For most countries, we have a large set and we like and often very often partner with uh, researchers based in those countries to um, to, uh, to help us build out our collection of media sources in those countries, because they have domain knowledge. Um, uh, uh, and then the last was that, uh, that uh, future of news, uh, which again, tries to think about how can we, what, how can we support journalists or, or media people in the media as they try to build better defenses against mis and disinformation, uh, whether that be in professional newsrooms or with bloggers or, or media producers or with students. Um, and then the last piece I wanted to, to share was just a little bit about where we're going. So um, right now, as you, as you know, as you've probably already surmised for the past uh, eight or 10 years, we have focused on the open web. Um, and not surprisingly, the media ecosystem is broader than just open web news articles. Uh, we all know that, we're all researching it. Um, we're trying to, we, a lot of us have done work where we've done one-off projects that have prototyped how to merge different platform information. So what we're doing right now, which you'll hear about and actually want to give you all a preview of that, something that isn't quite out to the public users yet, but you all are going to get a preview of that and early access to it, is how to create uh, deeper investigations that pull in links that are shared on platforms like Reddit. Um, or, uh, or and things that links that show up in Google News, and we're trying to build out support to be able to to do things like pull in Facebook stuff automatically via CrowdTangle for that sub slice of Facebook. Um, trying to think about ways if we can do Twitter, but if you have a CSV of your own data, like maybe you have CrowdTangle access, you can also upload a CSV um, and then add that into the mix. Still focusing on news on the open web, but trying to talk make statements about who's being shared and whose voices are being shared in, in lots of different platforms. And then starting to think about, okay, can we also find useful ways to help ourselves and other researchers research the actual content? So if a link is being shared on Twitter, uh, what else can we give you about those tweets? Or, or uh, can, do we have a way where we can give you all the Reddit posts? We're not quite there yet for probably obvious architectural reasons um, as we continue to big out or build out our big data system. But uh, that's where we're going. And uh, right now, a lot of the support for our work in specific is focused on hate speech and extremism online and trying to think, as a lot of people are, about um, how those voices from the fringes get amplified into the center, both in a lot of the axes that Ashka just pointed out, you know, in attention, in the language that gets amplified, in who's doing the amplifying, and uh, in what's being read or looked at. So that's kind of a state of the platform right now, or state of media cloud, uh, where we are right now, and hopefully provide some useful background. Um, and uh, it's also worth mentioning that we're doing some transitions right now. Right now, it's mostly a partnership between MIT and Harvard, uh, and uh, I'm leaving to join Northeastern, and Ethan Zuckerman, who started this project, is, um, is leaving to join UMass Amherst, and we still have the Harvard affiliation. So we're in the middle of some institutional changes as well. Um, I see one question around uh, how the projects or applications that we might have mentioned, like these civic issues, how they impact the tool. And I'd say there's a couple of ways to answer that. Um, and uh, Ashka certainly can speak to that as the rest is can as well. Um, one is that the, you'll hear soon that there's some media sources that we regularly collect information from. And there's some countries that we have really good coverage of. Our projects have definitely impacted what's in our database already. So uh, if you want to look at, you know, coverage of, uh, of India. We actually have really good collections that we've tracked for a couple of years of Indian English language and Hindi language papers because we've done a couple of projects there. I can't say the same for, um, for Poland, right? Because we haven't done that. We have something there, but it's not well fleshed out. The second piece is in terms of features. So for instance, uh, there's certain types of analyses that our research has, has moved towards. And as we do that, we try to bake those features in to then be available for all, all researcher, 
all researchers. So for instance, some of our work, which you'll hear about on, um, on word embeddings that came from a research project that we then baked in. We're playing with images now, trying to think about how we could bake in image analysis. Um, and that's all about which projects we use and uh, what research we're doing. And of course that prioritizes the features that get added to the larger platform. But we definitely have sort of a pipeline of things we try out and if they work and seem useful, we add them into the broader set of tools and try to make that available as much as we can to other researchers to use, because we want this to be a piece of, as Ethan likes to say, our digital public infrastructure, like a layer of, of resources that are available to support this type of introspection and research. I hope that answers. Um, I'll just add to that that one of the case studies that we're looking today is looking at a project that we use to really inform how we think about multi platform research on the updated version of topic mapper that Rahul was talking about. So you'll get a bit of a glimpse into this thought process of how we initially broke down those research questions and then you can kind of compare that to what running a multi platform topic on media cloud looks like now. So you'll be able to sort of compare and follow through that thought process as well, which should be really interesting. And I would like also to add one really helpful resource that came up from a research project is that there are media collections across the partisan spectrum from the US that were a product of, a, of the study of the Berkman Klein Center. And it's really helpful if you want to do political analysis. <laughs>